Hey, it's Jim, the Buckeye Boy from the Jim Davis Show. It's weekday morning, 7 to 10, on Colorado Sports Lane of the team. Make sure you join us weekdays, 7 to 10, for the Jim Davis Show. Uh, John Gray pitching and hitting the Rockies to a victory against Cincinnati. John Gray with a 467-foot home run. It is the longest home run for any Rocky, well, as we record this on a Thursday, of any Rocky this season. Longer than Arenado, Chuck Nasty, Reynolds, any of those guys, the Gray Wolf going yard against Cincinnati. And he also gets the victory. He's now 2-0 in the season. Uh, John Gray getting it done. Yeah, and the home run was the longest by any pitcher in the StatCast era, too. Yeah. So there is that. I mean, it's not just Rocky's notable footnotes for that, but uh, also in the StatCast era, the longest home run by a pitcher. And that was a massive dinger he smashed on Wednesday night. And he didn't have his best stuff on the mound, but... You know, he drove in, too. Pat Valeka had a home run as well, and they they got enough done, and he limited the Reds just enough to pick up another win. We talked about this a little bit. Pat Valeka had the three RBIs. You know, you, you look at where Trevor's story is right now. It's not like it was last year. I mean, the, the, the historic, incredible start that he had. He's really struggled this year. Valeka, smaller body of work, but he seems to be a little more offensively productive more quality at bats. Maybe it's time to give Trevor Story a little uh, time on the bench and refocus and give Pat Baleka more opportunities to play at shortstop. Wouldn't surprise me if this is one of the mental DL visits, you know, where uh, Trevor Story, you know, he, he strains a clod or, you know, a little oblique issue and then all of a sudden he We can't thought that with the shoulder injury. earlier, right? Yeah, because we, we thought that may have been a, uh, yeah. you know, a little mental DL visit where he's not really all that, he could probably play, but he's not really being productive and you know if Kyle Schwarber can get sent down I think Trevor Story can absolutely be sent to Albuquerque for a week or two maybe just until he figures it out I mean he just looks overmatched at times. Rocky's still very much contenders for the wild card and still in, in the hunt for the division uh, when the trade deadline which, which is fast approaching there's talk that Marcus Stroman's kind of back on the radar the, the starter for the for the Toronto Blue Jays 25, he'd be under control to 2020. But the really the more pressing needs a bullpen right now. Pat Neshack is a guy that for the Phillies, it seems to make some sense for the Rockies. Yeah, he really is. Uh, they need the bridge. They have mm -hmm. the starters, they have the closer, and Greg Holland still leads the majors with 28 heading into Thursday's day game with the Reds. They need the bridge. That's the thing. And Marcus Stroman, he'd be, he'd be a great addition. And you mentioned team control for another three seasons after this one. But what are you going to have to give up? And is it going to be worth it? And then are you even going to be able to re-sign him? So you may lose your prospects and the guy you traded them for at the end of the day. Whereas Nishek, he's not going to be super expensive if you want to sign him past this year. He is 36. Your bullpen is a uh, veteran, to be nice. A lot, of, a lot of veterans in the bullpen. You know, but he's he would be an addition that if it doesn't work out, it's very easy to move on. Right, or or do you, if, or maybe Steve Foster, Darren Holmes feels like that Sensatella, maybe he becomes that guy. Maybe it's it's Jake McGee. Maybe it's one of those guys. Maybe it's Oberg. Maybe it's one of those guys. Yeah. They feel like they they can do it kind of by committee to get it to Greg Holland. That's, Sens Sensatella's had a nice couple outings out of yeah. the bullpen. McGee has been way more up than than down. He's had some downs mm -hmm. a couple this season, but not nearly like it was last year. As long as you keep the ball away from Jordan Lyles and Adam Onovino in significant times, I think it'll be okay. Yeah, particularly Otto right now. It's been it's been really love the guy. Right? Yeah, but it's been rough. Uh, also, Paul Millsap expected to ink his deal Friday with the, the Denver Nuggets. Uh, Millsap, people are saying, well, but we look at Gallinari. Gallinari was the future, right? In yeah. The deal for Melo could score, could run the floor. But you look at here's some things. Number one, the knee injuries have limited his. His effectiveness from a scoring standpoint. Well, you have a 40. If you look at what the mill staff was considering, that's where that is going to be. That is where that is going to be. The local sports will be mostly working together with the Indians and the Indians players. So I think it's going to be a story that will get a lot of purpose for the rebounding. The final trade with Paul Mill staff, I actually know he's a tough guy. absolutely is, and I've been thinking about this. We mentioned Millsap and uh, Joe Kitch played together. In
think I think Millsap. I think that's gonna. same theory as last year. Instead of calling in and drafting a movie, you'll draft what we decided to be one of the best 16 albums of all time. Go to the website, theteam1340.com. You can see a little behind-the-scenes footage of us unpacking the goodies, so to speak. You get a uh, House of Marley turntable in there as well and more from the... and the House of Marley turntable. Details at our website at 40com Until next time, we'll see you.